This video was sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Okay. So here is an interesting pack. Um, so this format, the way it's panned out, is two drops are super duper important, and this is one of the best ones around. It's really not that hard to turn it into a bunch of damage. Um, there's lots of aggressive creatures, there's lots of equipment, there's lots of all that stuff that makes Battlecry Goblin really good, and I think it's a pretty easy first pick in this pack. And I guess maybe it would have been on day one of the format too, now that I'm looking at this pack. I think Drider is the only other card that's like something you're happy to take with the first pick. It's a pretty weak pack overall. But we get the Battlecry Goblin out of it, so uh, we're not too broken up about it. There's lots of solid cards in here, of course, like the Bard and whatnot, but we definitely want Battlecry Goblin. <laughs> We did run 16 lands in our first deck of the day um, to sort of test it out. And uh, just because I feel like I've flooded so much in this format. But we also had a pretty low curve and, and it went well. So so Goblin Morningstar is great too. Another really good two drop. You know, it gives you a creature, it gives you an equipment. I like it a lot. Hobgoblin Captain has turned out to be one of the sort of premier commons in the format. Just because, you know, turning it into a 3-1 first striker really isn't that easy. Uh, really isn't that hard rather. It is pretty easy. We want the Morning Star, though. Cleric class, not great. Uh, you know, if you go crazy on life gain, it's insane, but you have to end up there. Uh, so yeah, I think we take Goblin Morning Star here. Someone's gonna get two Cleric classes. That's a pretty good foundation for a life gain deck, if you can find the payoffs, anyway. Um, so I'd probably grab Priest of Ancient Lore here. Nice little nice little two-for-one is, uh, is pretty good. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, not as aggressive as our first two cards, but it is a creature and that matters and it draws us a card and stuff. So yeah, you know, these two are okay, but you know, they're not incredible. Um, Evolving Wilds is even on the radar in a pack like this one, just cause it's another, not that impressive one, unless you're going life gain basically, but yeah, we'll take the priest. So, you know, red, white cares about equipment for sure. Uh, but Paladin Shield isn't really the one it's after. Steadfast Paladin's pretty good too, but I actually think I like Knoll Hunter enough more than the Paladin that maybe I should take it here. Hmm. Hmm. I'm taking one of them. We do already have one white card. Maybe that should be enough to convince me. It probably, it probably is. I do like Knoll Hunter a lot though, when you can... It's a pretty good two drop, but uh, so is the Paladin. I think Null Hunter is a better two drop, but when you already have one Priest of Ancient Lore, I think, I think the Paladin probably makes sense. You know, I don't like the Earth Cult guy. I like him even less in this format now because six mana creatures and things like if you're not getting to them quickly, just don't seem to be that great um, overall. Okay. So this is an interesting pack. We've got Null Hunter again. Like I said, it's a really good green two drop. We also have Faraday's Fireball, which is a good removal spell. It's not excellent, but it is, it's fine. And I think I'd probably take it over Null Hunter here. Don't like Critical Hit at all or Paladin Shield, really. This can provide some real reach sometimes too. I mean, it always does two to your opponent, so. That's definitely a thing that matters. Like, kill their blocker, do two to them. Like, this card swings games more often than you'd think because of that. What makes Fireball not excellent is costing five mana and being kind of slow, basically. That's that's what makes it not excellent. Uh, it's not... It, I think it's in the lower range of premium, but just barely. So we definitely want the Bugbear. You know, it turns on pack tactics out of nowhere, and it's just good in general. Goblin Javelinier has ended up being a very real um, card in this format, though. Uh, Evolving Wilds, again, wouldn't mind it. And Dwarf Hulk Champion's not bad either, but we're going to go with the Hulking Bugbear here. Okay, so this is an interesting pick. So we've got the Javelinier, who I do think you kind of need some equipment to really get going. And we do have one piece of equipment, but... It's not so good that I, I, I'm, like, super tempted by the Javelinier. We do also have Battlecry Goblin, which likes the Javelinier, but I'm a little tempted by the Arborea Pegasus here. You know, it comes down, sends something into the air uh, pretty often. Um, I think I like it a little more than the Javelinier, given what our deck looks like right now. 
might just be our top curve, but it's pretty good top curve. Um, yeah, so this pack's not great. Um, it's very unlikely we end up in a deck that can actually complete dungeons in red-white, at least consistently. But is it more likely I end up in red-white than it is that I, like, play a hired Hexblade? Maybe. I don't like Leather Armor or Mimic, if you're wondering why I'm not talking about them. They're just don't... They're, neither of them do things that are worth a whole card. We'll take the Stalker. It also cuts white for what that's worth, but it's not worth a lot. But it is it is worth a, a something. Okay, here we will take a Javelin here. I like it more than you're ambushed on the road. Jade Cell Sword, if we were making treasure, would be a little more interesting. Well, we are going to make treasure now. We'll take the Hoarding Ogre. It's not, like, amazing if we're in, like, a aggro deck. Um, but it's, it's all right. I mean... A little bit of fixing. I mean, there's a very real chance it gets cut, but we will take a second one, too. Because um, there wasn't anything else in that pack anyway, so. Here's the shield. We'll grab it. I mean, again, I, the only way you would play the shield is if you had, like, every equipment payoff in this set and didn't have any good equipment to speak of. You know, then you would do it, I guess. But other than that, I don't really think it's something you want to be doing. And we'll take another one. <laughs> and we'll take another one. Okay. So Frog Hemoth is pretty good. Uh, is it so good that I'm willing to give up on white? Probably. I mean, our white's not that good. I mean, it's okay. Priest of Ancient Lore is our best card. Um... You know, the white cards here aren't really anything I want to take this early. Plundering Barbarian's okay, but... Frog Hemoth is good enough to take here, I think. You know, it just... It can come out of nowhere. Um, do a bunch of damage. Exile some stuff. Gain some counters. Gain you some life. Give you pack tactics out of nowhere. So, you know, if we see more good white stuff, you know, it's not like we're going to give up on white, but... So far, I mean... Our white stuff is not uh, great. This is not good. So we got disconnected, which is fun. Uh, not sure. Okay, so what did we, we missed something somewhere. <laughs> I don't know what it was, but we missed a thing. Um, we missed a pick. I don't know how important of one it was. So, probably just Valor Singer here. I do like the Fireball and l Guard Ranger. Reaper's Talisman, also super good, uh, obviously. We could consider going there. I mean, we're still not completely locked in on a second color, and I do think Reaper's Talisman is good enough to think about switching. So, I think I'm going to do it. I do like Valor Singer, but... I think both Frog Hemoth and Reaper's Talisman are both cards where you're you're very willing to make a switch if, if you give if you're given the opportunity. Um, I think we'll take improvised weaponry. It kills a whole bunch of stuff in this format and it makes treasure and all of that is really good. So yeah. We could splash Reaper's Talisman in a world where we end up with like a bunch of treasure. I don't know that we're gonna end up in that world. So green card here isn't great. Basilisk, the other one's okay. Um, Ghast and Underdark Basilisk are okay. I wonder whether I want the Rapier. It's proven to be surprisingly good. Um, the cards in this pack... Oh, come on. Apparently my, my connection is silly right now. Uh, yeah, we'll take the Rapier here in the end, I think. It's not crazy to splash the Talisman. No, I don't think so. So, Rust Monster is good, but definitely better in a deck that has, like, more treasure stuff going on. I think we probably just want the Veteran. We have three pieces of equipment, potentially, and it's good with them. Uh, so, I think it's what we want to take here. Black does look pretty open, um, so that is something to keep an eye on. I like Delver's Torch enough that I think I'd take it here over Monk of the Open Hand. We keep getting disconnected for, like, ten seconds, which is weird. So,
Okay, another armory veteran, but maybe Hobgoblin Captain. Hobgoblin Captain is probably just better than the veteran. I do like the veteran, and we do have four pieces of equipment potentially, but the captain gets you halfway there on pack tactics all on his own, and that's awesome. And we can pick up another veteran here, and I think we do over a fireball. Maybe we're just going to be mono red. I don't know. We're seeing plenty of red, not much of anything else. Um, we could easily sort of switch around. Thank you for the follow, uh, Falantir and Sea Will. I think splashing the talisman is good, but we would need more fixing than we have right now. So, I like Plundering Barbarian. It does give us fixing and the ability to blow up problem artifacts, of which there are many. I like it more than Half Elf Monk for this for this deck. But that Valor Singer coming back is pretty good news for us, I think. Yeah, I apparently keep getting disconnected for like 10 seconds at a time, which hasn't been a huge deal for the draft, but apparently for streaming it's a huge deal, you know. Surprise, surprise. So Gloomstalker, not really going to make the cut here. Um, we just we don't have that many great white cards, frankly. Um, we'll take Shambling Ghast. Like, Reaper's Talisman is better than all four of these white cards are. Talisman is good all game long, I think. But, yeah, it, it is good early. All right, we'll grab this Brazen Dwarf. Yeah, we really may go Mono Red. I mean, if we keep getting... Like, if this last pack goes the way the first two did, uh, we will. Um, I mean, we could consider running, like, four Swamps and 12 Mountains. Something like that, too. The way our... Uh, Stuff is looking. <laughs> well, white is a really, really good two drop. Um, what? white w-h-i-t-e cards do we have in this pack though <laughs> um well portable hull is pretty nice and paladin is too i kind of think like the white is good enough especially combined you know if we have the talisman and the white w-i-g-h-t um that's enough for me to really want to go into black i think uh i think that's probably where i would go and Portable Hole is nice. You know, Precipitous Drop is here, too. We wouldn't mind that wheeling. And Boots of Speed is okay, but I think the white is just what we take here. And we look a little bit here at uh, black. Okay, so the black cards here aren't great. Uh, we could take another Fireball. We have one. Um, it's not terrible top curve to have. We could also take, you know, the Mace is okay. Ranger's Hawk is solid, uh, especially with, like, if we're Reaper's Talismaning. Um, I kind of feel like just taking the Fireball makes more sense here, though. It's just not a super amazing pack in general, so I think the Fireball is fine here. Magic Missile, okay. Well, we'll grab that here. We've seen back-to-back -back Displacer Beast, which is pretty sweet for somebody. Dragon Turtle's cool, too. But yeah, Magic Missile's great. You know, this people play lots of X2s and X1s in this format, and you find yourself getting a 2 for one with Magic Missile, like, way more often than you'd think. So right now, I think we're inclined to go with black red. Uh, and the ghast probably would make the cut. Um, you know, it's not the most aggressive creature ever, but it's not not aggressive, you know? Ooh, another battle cry goblin is the business. That's what we're looking for. So this guy's great. Been a big overperformer. Uh, wouldn't mind a Rust Monster or Armory Veteran coming back our way, but we definitely take another Battle Cry Goblin. Yeah, I mean, we can go really low on our curve. Like, we're probably not a Hoarding Ogre deck. We're probably, like, we're going to have removal way up here, like a Faraday's Fireball, but everything else is going to be, like, three or less. So, yeah. I mean, we may even have too many threes. We're probably not a plundering barbarian deck either, even though blowing up artifacts would be nice. I'm not, like, desperate for it. So we make some treasure. So I guess I'm probably going to take the Hexblade. 
we could think about the elemental as top curve, but I'm not loving it. It's crazy how many blue cards are left. This is the kind of thing, you know, that uh, can happen. You know, I think a lot of pros have weighed in and said they think blue is the worst color, and I think they're right. But when it's this open, <laughs> you can end up with some pretty good blue decks. Uh, but yeah, we'll take the Hexblade here. Um, ooh. So we probably want Dragon's Fire more than you come to Null Camp. It's a good removal spell. We're never going to get the Dragon upside, but I don't think I care. So. so there's another Ghast. There's also another Javelinier. So I think the Javelinier is probably a little better as a one-drop. Yeah, I mean, it, I will play it main board if we have room for it, but it's just not like a guarantee that it makes it. Maybe the gas is just better, huh? It probably is. So, okay. So, I think we grab Sepulchre Ghoul here. Uh, you know, Red Dragon's okay, but kind of expensive and slow for the format. Uh, Shambling Gas, another one wouldn't be bad, but I think another two drop is good, especially a good one like our Sepulchre Ghoul. Uh, we don't really want critical hit. I think we just grab Vampire Spawn here. Gives us a little bit of reach. I mean, it's not the most aggressive creature, but it could make the cut. I agree that we have stuff that would allow us to go mono red, but I don't think giving up white and uh, Reaper's Talisman is the way you want to go when you have the opportunity not to. So... Yeah. Probably not picking up any more real cards here. Yeah, not so much. Not seeing real cards. Okay. So we can definitely play 16 lands in this deck. We're like mostly two drops and one drops. Um, the question is, the big question is, is playing white better? And I think the answer is no. It's extra confusing because of white, but you know what I mean. Um, white is never going to be disappointing and limited, so believe you me. Um, especially in a format that's turned out to be this aggressive. Yeah, I mean, maybe the Barbarian's just better than Vampire Spawn. Probably is, um, for our deck. Having one way to blow up an artifact is usually something you kind of want in your main deck. This deck looks pretty good, though. I mean, we the one thing we're sort of lacking is, like, the sacrifice. We don't really have the treasure or sacrifice sub-themes going. We're basically just a black-red aggro deck, but that's kind of the point in this format. Oh, yeah, I can run 16 anyway. So, we, uh, we can actually run both. But, uh... Yeah, I mean, that's, um, do I want the Rapier? Yeah, probably. It seems to be pretty good in this deck most of the time. Yeah, all right. I think this looks like the deck. But yeah, this, this format and Synergy, I mean, Synergy is a thing, but it's not as big as it's been. Like, we saw nothing but Synergy in sets like Strixhaven and Kaldheim, so we're in kind of a different world now. Disconnecting for 10 seconds will be more of a problem if it happens here. Okay, looks good. Um, we can definitely get to... Um, battle cry out of nowhere, especially if we draw another mountain, which is kind of what we want to do. Well, we don't have it yet. I still think we play the goblin. May die right away. It is kind of a must kill early on. Okay. Well. I think we'll attack. And play... Yeah, we'll play the Morning Star here. 
Nice. So it's basically a two mana two one with trample now, which is a pretty good deal. And it can be buffed by our battle cry goblin. So together I can actually make another goblin already. So do I just dragons fire that thing and attack? Kinda seems like the plan, right? Yeah. We do need that third land pretty badly, so hopefully it shows up someday. <laughs> Especially a mountain. I haven't found that card to be worth it. It seems too slow in a format where you can be doing what we're doing. I mean, right now, even if we don't get to do anything... Um, should I add to the board or just pump them both? Probably should just pump them both and hold on to our resources, honestly. So, yeah... Because that gets us in for seven. Red there would have been nice, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, so I probably play Valor Singer here. And just pump this and swing with it. I could have gone more aggressive, I guess. Um, but I think that's what we're going to do next turn. Yeah, I mean, that basically means they're dead, right? They're hoping they can make treasure. Well, they did get two, so they may be able to play something. If they can play a blocker, they might be okay. And they can. Okay, well, there we go. That's that's kind of what we're looking for. Uh, so, yeah, we play... Hold on. Is it actually better for me to just... I guess just Magic Missile is probably the safer option. It's tempting to play the Bugbear and go crazy, but if I Magic Missile do one here and two to them, they're just dead, so... Yeah... Alright. I could pump twice, it's true. There were lots of ways to win there, I guess. They did have one mana available, and I just wanted to be as cautious as possible in terms of, like, making sure we'd win the game that turn, and not let them untap with a bunch of mana, potentially. Okay. This is not a good hand. Um, we probably have to send it back. There's too much stuff we're missing. Like, you know, creatures. Um, yeah. This is much better. I guess the ghoul is probably the weakest link here. Yeah. We would have liked to be on the play, of course, but maybe they won't play anything for two turns. Darn it. They played a thing. Um, I think we'll play the captain first here. Do I want to attack here? I think when I can just play Battlecry Goblin next turn and attack with everything, get a Goblin, this will have First Strike. It's pretty hard for me to want to attack here. I 
I guess I'll still get... I'll still get, if I want to, Battlecry next turn, so maybe we just go for it. Yeah, we're just gonna go for it. I think it probably just gets blocked, but... You know, I've yet to see Faraday, like, really go off, but maybe we're gonna see it here. Um... Trying to decide if it's worth Battlecry goblining here. It probably is. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we want them to both have three power. Attack with both. I think that works for me. We are giving up a lot of resources and only have them at 17. I don't love that part. But hopefully we can just kill Faraday here and draw some gas. That's the goal here. All right. So... The fact they didn't put anything on Faraday is kind of weird. Makes me think they have counter magic, but it's probably bar the door or whatever. So I think I'm just going to do this now. They could have an answer, yeah. Uh, that's not really an answer. Nice. You have them down to 12 now, at least. Well, that's not so good. That's really not good. So now we're in trouble. We need to stop drawing lands. <laughs> or we're gonna die. That's kind of the name of the game in this format sometimes. In any format, I guess, but... It seems like stumbling in this format, um... Is really costly. That's a good draw here, just because it lets me kill a thing. So... We will kill a thing. See whether we can stabilize. Uh-oh. Yeah, you're not really going to get it done for me. Unfortunately, this time around. So they just equip Rhyme Shield. Hmm. I might actually get to kill the thing. Oh, no, not if they attack with both. Yeah, so I have to block. No, uh, I'm just dead. Yeah, yeah, we just dead. All right. Yeah, that was uh, we got beat pretty fast there by a blue red deck. I think when um, that tiefling blue red tiefling legendary signpost when it goes off it's got to be insane i just haven't seen it happen yet i am running 16 yeah it happens this is a slowish hand but i do think we keep it it's weird how many hands we've seen that don't have two drops or one drops in them. There's a decent chance we draw one. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this isn't really the start we're envisioning. Now that's better. That's more like it. So if next turn we can play Bugbear and attack, we're just going to be in business. But uh, we'll see whether that happens. They are looking closely at my Battlecry Goblin, which concerns me. Okay. That's annoying. Um... But we can finish it off with a magic missile next turn if we need to. It has been kind of underwhelming in this format because, once again, things are fast enough here that having time for Gretchen just doesn't seem to happen as much as one would like. Okay, this should be interesting. Um... Got options here. Hmm. 
one of them is just that I pump both my guys in attack, but it's probably better to... Yeah, we'll magic missile here. Well, we can make it so they have to block the battle cry goblin, but it's probably better to just do two, do one to them. I mean, it basically comes out the same either way, but I guess this way they could make a mistake. So, yeah. Yeah, so let's submit two. Do two. The spy, one to Gretchen. It's the same amount of damage, though, because we would have done one to them, one more to them, and we're going to do one more to them here than we would have otherwise done. So if we can just draw land and Faraday's fireball every turn, that'd be cool. Let's do it. Can we do it? Let's do it. Don't kill something. You don't need to do that, just... Ooh, we did it. Living the dream. Okay, so... We probably kill the Prowler because we don't really want anything to die if we can help it. So, we're gonna kill the Prowler here. And we do two to them, which is great. We swing out and get a token. Well, well, well. We need about a million mana if we're going to kill him. Um, well, I think we just kill Gretchen here and swing out again. Yeah. So that drops them to seven. Everybody attacks. We get another body. Um, they die, pretty much. They go to one, I guess. Yeah. They go to one. That's interesting. So they do have more life if they do that, but they also enable me to make more goblins and to pump all the goblins. Too bad you're not a goblin. Maybe they have a kill spell for it anyway. Yeah, that's pretty much how I've seen Gretchen go. That means they're dead, so... They definitely should have blocked the... Well, I guess they would have still been dead there, huh? Yeah. One would have gotten through. I have had her be kind of okay. Like, early in the format, I tried to go really hard into ramp because I usually like that strategy. And she was, like, kind of good. But, yeah, I mean, she just... Not having any power at all is a problem. If they'd made her cost one more and be, like, a 1-4, she'd be so much better. Because she'd actually be able to, you know, block and kill things. Um... But yeah. It's pretty, I mean, on paper she looks so good, like two mana for that, but formats matter and... Ooh, we get to play White and Battle Cry Goblin early here, which should feel pretty good, I think. Um... Ooh, and there's a Reaper's Talisman to go along for the ride. So I think we want to play white, and we probably just slap the Talisman on it early here. Because it's such a problem early. Like, even if our opponent can find a way to kill it, um, it can make a, a token copy. Now, they may be able to kill it now, in which case it won't do that, but, you know, it, it can get out of hand quickly. So, most likely what's going to happen here is, yeah, they're going to... Hmm. It may just be better to play the Valor Singer here, in retrospect. Um... Yeah, I think it is. Play Valor Singer. 
pump white, attack with white. White'll die, but then we'll also get a 2-2. Two -two. Or they or they'll just take four, which I think we're I think we're down with that. Okay, that's not super disastrous. Hmm. So we could do the talisman thing here, but again, I feel like maybe just adding to the board is gonna be more worthwhile because we can. So, yeah. So let's uh, go to combat. So we have four mana, huh? So I could pump this swing with both. Um, get a goblin token. It's not terrible. Yeah, that probably is worthwhile. Hmm. I don't actually need to. Yeah, I do. So yeah, let's use this ability. I basically have to block Battlecry Goblin. And now we have a token to stick the Talisman on next turn while dropping them to 12. Okay. Now it's Talisman time for sure. Sticking the rapier on it is pretty tempting, huh? I think we just do it. It's as much reach as we have. Fireball mana, this would be a good time for it to show up. Maybe we can... Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, well... May be a god in disguise. It's not a complete disaster, given the board state. Um, the ability can turn off one of our attackers. But turning off one attacker isn't, isn't a big, big deal here. Especially if we draw fireball mana. I shall not let you harm. Wait, why did they do that? Just as a joke? <laughs> I guess they just did that as a joke, because they feel like they're losing either way. Okay, well, that means we win. That was weird, but I'll take it. <laughs> did they think it gave their creature one of those keywords? Because they weren't dead if they were allowed to block with their creature. Not completely. I mean, I've been... We've all had games against a talisman that feel hopeless, and you want to do that. So maybe that's kind of where they were there. They were just like, I don't have a way out of this. <laughs> so I'm just going to play this and be wacky. That's what it felt like. At least... Looks good. You know, could be faster, but it's all right. I kind of forgot this is in our deck. Kind of seems out of place. It's okay, but like, probably not what we were after. Javelinier is pretty good here, since, you know, basically can't be blocked by X1s. Veteran. 
I'm trying to think what we could play instead of the ogre. There's got to be something. It's probably going to win us this game now that I'm questioning its inclusion. Interesting. Uh, so Talisman's a good draw here, but it's also the kind of thing that could lead to a huge tempo loss if they just use removal in response, and they could easily have it. So I think we just play Valor Singer here. And, uh, pump up the Javelinier. Attack for four. I think something's gonna die here. Yeah, as I say, it's just a question of what it is that's gonna die. Okay. So, once this has talisman on it it'll just kill everything that blocks it so that's uh you know a little combo nothing can block it basically so we're gonna play talisman we're gonna equip the talisman to the javelinier pump up the javelinier attack So this will just outright die before damage is done. And that means our opponent can't, you know, try to fight a war of attrition against the Talisman. They have to kill the Javelinier or, you know, die. Yeah, that's, that is pretty good. Three bodies is pretty nice. Um, I guess I kill the 2-2 two -two if I want to kill something here. Question is whether I even need to kill something here. <laughs> I guess I can wait. It's an instant, so we could end up really messing them up here. All right, so let's go to combat. Pump up the javelinier. Attack with the javelinier. See how they block here. If they block, I guess, is the question. <laughs> they may just take it. This is such a miserable card to play against. All right, so we could just wipe their whole board here, and that would mean we lose our javelinier, but we'd kill we'd kill two other creatures, and then we could also kill the ranger, and then still have with our fireball that is, and then still have uh, the talisman. And I'd get the 4-1 out of the way. But I guess the 4-1, when I have Goblin Javelinier and Shambling Ghast in play, just isn't very good. So I think we just use... Nah, I mean, I think getting the blocker out of the way is worth it. Yeah. I'm trying to decide how I want to do things here. No, no, it's only one blocker, sadly. Do we just let this happen and then clear the board by killing the L2 Guard Ranger? The Javelin Linear thing is just so potent that... I think keeping the Javelinier around is our best bet. Yeah. Eh. Uh, nah, we're gonna wipe their board. Wipe their board. Yeah. Those things are annoying. Especially right after you wipe their board, but, <laughs> you know. Hmm. 
Okay, so I think we stick the talisman on the gas. Make it a 2 1. Attack with it. And we'll get a treasure here, because why not? Actually, there is a reason, because we can actually play our zombie ogre now. And we shall scry. We don't want another land. Both in top deck mode. We definitely have the better board position. Um... Of course, if we keep drawing like that, um, do I just send Valor Singer in first here? I think so, because the ogre gives us some value, you know, after something dies, and they'd have to block with the troubadour to kill the stinger, and we can get a goblin out of um. Venturing at the end of the turn here. Yeah, the ogre is doing some work. <laughs> I said it was going to end up playing a role after I was like, should we have this in here? I'm going to look at our deck real quick, but... we I don't know that we have anything better to run. Up to four and one. It's pretty good. Because a random five, like, it's it's weird to have in this deck, frankly. Even though it worked out well there. But yeah, we don't... Do I think it's better than Hoarding Ogre for us? Yeah, probably. And it's better than Herald of Hadar for sure. So, yeah. That's why it's in there. So we don't really have... We don't have really any better options that are, like, lower curve creatures that are worth anything. They're all shoved into our deck already. Yeah, I mean, I do have... Obviously, when you get things going with the Ogre, it can be pretty sweet. It's just that, like, a 5-drop that isn't super impactful in this deck is probably not ideal, but... All right, this is a good hand. Very good, actually. We can cast everything in it. So I think we probably lead with gas, then hobgoblin captain, then talisman, equip. You know, maybe magic missile has to be played before then, but okay. Um, well, now. We definitely attack. That much is clear. Um, trying to decide if I want to play the Captain or the Battle Cry Goblin. Um, I think we probably play Hobgoblin Captain, and we can maybe look ahead to turn four. Like, we're trying to do as much damage as possible. Then on turn four, we probably play and pump this, but I guess it could go the other way, too. We play the Hobgoblin Captain and use the ability... Or they do that, which is a thing. Um, yeah, I think we start going for it now with the talisman. Especially on an empty board like this. It can get us a pretty nice early advantage that hopefully we can continue to press. Battlecry Goblin, I think, is about as strong as Reaper's Talisman. But, yeah, I mean, I'm torn. It's funny we have both of them in this deck, because I think they're the... They're maybe the two best uncommons. I don't know. Magic Missile is insanely good, too. Wow, that's that's pretty good. Well, I guess we just attack here and then play both Battlecry Goblins. If they use, like, a kill spell here, obviously we're in the green. Like, <laughs> like if they want to use a kill spell, they kill our ghast. Like that, then we are perfectly okay with it. So we're gonna make a treasure and then go battle cry goblin battle cry goblin things may be about to get ugly. 
We may not really be in uh, Reaper Talisman territory. It depends what happens here, obviously enough. I think they have lots of kill spells. That seems to be the uh, the trend here. If they kill one of these goblins, I think then we do Talisman. But if they're both still alive, I think most likely we want to uh, pump them uh, pretty hard. <laughs> I mean, Talisman is good all game long. I mean, it's definitely better early. You're not wrong. But, like, it's... Ooh, wow. Well, there you go. Okay, so we'll play the Javelinier, too. <laughs> Let's see if that prompts something. All right, so we're going to pump once now... And then pump again after the tokens are made, if we're allowed to get there. Um, they may kill a Battlecry Goblin here. We'd still get one token, and that would be perfectly fine with us. Wow. Okay, so this is happening, huh? So, resolve. 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 That should be an insane amount of damage. Ah. Okay, well. That does help them some, but, like, not really enough, I don't think. Especially when we have Reaper's Talisman as our backup plan. Yeah, they're just going to throw them all in front of one of those and take 11. Works for me. Ha, <laughs> Especially when we have Magic Missile in our hand, which can just do three to them if we needed to. And we have Reaper's Talisman in play, too, so... Okay, so... Yeah. We're just gonna Magic Missile the Goblin. This Goblin. Um, swing with everybody. Oh, I... I did the math slightly wrong there. I thought I had enough power. So they're going to be at one here. They're going to be at one here. Not a great place to be when you have Reaper's Talisman in play. But yeah. I sh yeah. Yeah. Kill the one. Kill the X1 and 2 to them made a lot more sense. It was virtually lethal every way. But getting the small creature out of the way who could block and then killing... Doing the rest of them was definitely the right move. You are not wrong. Well, you know, this week we came back came back after a couple of more rough weekends. Our first weekend in the format was good. The one after that was not super good. I mean, we still... I think we were like one game above 500. Came back thinking we needed to do more aggressive things and uh it's paid off so far good hand you know kind of don't love faraday's fireball in the opener but that's enough swamps i think At least it's a mountain. Um, I'm going to attack with the veteran here. Might be able to sneak in two damage. And we do. So we will be fireballing twice eventually in this game. Thank you for getting rid of that swamp. I appreciate that. Okay, so I probably want to kill Cridal. 
It's a little tempting to kill the Pixie Guide because I can hit harder this turn, but Cridal's a huge problem in the long run. So, yeah. Um, back with our Armory Veteran, see if we can maybe sneak in some damage. And then, yeah, we'll Magic Missile, Cridal. We don't have more creatures, but we're going to be able to kill whatever big things they might play while damaging them. And we'll continue to attack. I wish they'd attack with their 1-3. They do. Oh, of course they do. They can draw a card off of it. All right. So it's Fireball, Grazalax. Nice. Attack them down to 10. We really need to find some creatures here. One with haste especially would be good. Oh good, another Cridal. Well, that puts a damper on things. Um, hmm. It is an instant. I think we probably just play Battle Cry Goblin here and pass the turn. Unfortunate as that is. So we're gonna make it unblockable. would have been nice, but not amazing against this deck. There's a good fireball target. Okay. Oof. Oof, man. So, yeah, I guess we go after Shortcut Seeker here. We go down to nine. I guess I just swing out. Yeah. So we do kill both of those. Drop them down to six, but they do still have Cridal, so that's not so good. We could use a Talisman right about now. Hexblade would have been okay, but not amazing. Man, Secret Door is annoying. I think we could be in trouble here. Especially if we keep drawing lands. So, you know, they're making this game go long. They're going to sink a bunch of mana into Secret Door. <laughs> Another ghast. It is funny they're not milling lands at all. They milled one early that we appreciated, but since then it hasn't gone so well for us. So we're in trouble here. Uh, which I guess I already said, but we're, we're approaching even more trouble, I guess is my point. Without a talisman, mm, that would have actually been kind of nice. I guess it's not great. It can't kill any of their creatures, so. They do have to be a little bit careful just because a deck like this can easily have, like, one thing that alters combat so much that you suddenly take a ton of damage, but... I don't think... Yeah, Talisman is pretty much the only out. Ooh, I kind of forgot he could do that even with big creatures. Kind of weird they didn't also attack. Oh my god. <laughs> well, you know, we had a little bit of a puncher's chance. The entire multiverse and then they played Morden Kanan. So, yeah, we're done. <laughs> we are done.
I've had a blue black deck go like four and three. I don't know if that's coming together, but I've had the, you know a couple cridles and some stuff. It's pretty good. I think you know the format's fast, but if you have a deck that can play things early anyway, like the ghasts and and um, various other weak early creatures who are a, a speed bump at least for aggro decks. You can get away with slower decks in the format. They're just generally harder to make work. Okay, so kind of a weird hand, but I do think it's a keepable one. Could go sideways, but uh, you know. I'm sure we'll just draw a bunch of lands like um, like in our other games, right? So, because of the concern that is removal, well, they're in blue-green, actually. I think we just play white, because it's more likely they have a counter spell like, next turn, than it is they have removal right here. It could happen, of course, but it's just not that likely. Okay... Well, I think we attack. Good chance they just take it because trading is so bad for them there. Uh, then we'll play Hobgoblin Captain. And the question is, am I okay with letting them draw a card here? And I kind of think the answer is yes. Or they are they not going to attack? That seems crazy to me because it's not like either of these are blockable creatures. Yeah. So, I think we just let them draw the card here. Then we're going to ma... Ooh, we don't have magic missile mana, actually. We still have good attacks, but... I do need to draw the mana for magic missile to work. And I did not. That double red is in high demand right now. Okay, so... Let's attack. Do they just take six? They do. Um, who do we want to put the rapier on more? I mean, putting it here means he's going to be more effective at actually killing things, which means he'll make more zombies, but obviously a creature with first strike and a rapier is scarier, and he'll almost be a one-man pack tactics. So... I think we're going to put it here. Drop them down to nine. So if we can just start fireballing all over the place, we have a chance. But we do need another red mana for that to be a thing. <clears throat> Fight spell here would be bad news. And there's a reasonable chance, I'd say, that they have one. Come on, fireball mana. Ouch. Not much more to say than ouch about that. Um, I think we just hold on. Uh, we passed the turn here. I think we just have to hope we hit the double red and if we once we do i mean we're gonna be in business but yeah it's it's not awesome uh-oh yeah i think we let them um get out of this problem situation okay okay that is interesting so we're gonna improvise the weaponry i guess the spy yeah. The trickster can be a problem. I'm just kind of hoping it won't be. We know this is going to draw them cards, you know, so. So, here, I could play my Hobgoblin Captain again. But, if I don't... There's all kinds of things I can do next turn with double red. 
And a 3 1's not exactly going to do anything against a 2 5. So I think we just pass, unfortunately. Probably going to draw a mountain here. Oh, God. <laughs> well, that's game. Yeah, we, you know, our first several games felt felt pretty real, like we were in pretty good shape, but then, um, then this, this happened. Overall, I mean, this deck did fine, but, I'm just gonna fireball that frog hemoth to do it. Yes! <laughs> we killed ourselves. All right. Well, yeah, 5-3 is not... You know, we went 7-2 and two in the first draft of the day, 5-3 in the second one. That's a market improvement over thing, how things had been going. So I'm not, um, I'm not too upset about that. 